Freeman Dyson is Professor Emeritus of Physics at the Institute for Advanced Study and winner of the 1999 Templeton Prize for Progress in Religion. His books include Disturbing the Universe, Infinite in All Directions, and The Sun, the Genome, and the Internet. I interviewed him in his office at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey. Well, first of all, thanks very much for letting me uh, come talk to you here today. Uh, I, uh, I've never been within the walls of the Institute for Advanced Study before, and I feel kind of privileged. It has, it has a kind of mystique about it. Um, do, you, do you find that, that people react to it that way? I mean, am, am well, I, right? I try to demolish this, this aura of sanctity that surrounds the place. <laughs> I, 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 what it is, basically, it's a motel with stipends. And <laughs> that's all it is. It's just a place where young people come from all over the world and, uh -huh. and are given a year or two with mm. pay. A somewhat more selective admissions policies than some motels have, right? Yes. But still, that's basically what it is. Yeah. And mostly the important thing is what they do when they get home, not when they do when they, well, they're here. And I see. But you th there, there have been, I mean, Einstein, von Neumann, and so on. There have been a lot of people thinking deep cosmic thoughts here, Yes, right? but that's not really what the place is for. That, that's, oh, it's, uh, that's accidental. It's that's not for cosmic thoughts, really? Well, I if you're lucky, of course, you get a few of those. But, mm. but basically, we serve the young people, providing them with an opportunity to get to know each other, particularly people from remote parts of the world hmm. who otherwise wouldn't be in touch. And well, you, in any event, have uh, been doing your share of thinking cosmic thoughts, I guess. I mean, you've... you've uh, Not very much. Well, let's, I don't know, let, let's do a, a brief review. You, you, you wrote a paper some time ago uh, on the question of whether life could survive indefinitely in an expanding universe. Right. Um, and you've been, you, you've been discussing that uh, lately. You, you've, you invented this concept of what's now called the Dyson Sphere or... Uh, which which crops up in the science fiction literature sometimes. Yes, I mean, both of those items really have nothing to do with work. Those were both of them essentially just uh, little jokes. And and it, it, it's amusing that, of course, you, you get to be famous only for the things you don't think are serious. <laughs> well, you've done a good job of not being serious then, I guess. Um, well, let's, 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 I want to get back to all these cosmic questions and, and, and things you've said about the nature of God and, and so on, all the, all the cosmic stuff. Um, but, but first, as for the, the basic science you've done, you, uh, you started out as a studying mathematics, but then went into applied mathematics, particularly in the realm of physics, right? Right. And you made contributions to quantum mechanics. Right. I mean, I did first quite a lot of work as a pure mathematician. Mm -hmm. And I've always remained essentially a mathematician as far as my technical stuff is concerned. But you did, you did, you did important work in quantum electrodynamics, is that right. the phrase? Yes. Which is all, all I, that's as far as I want to pursue the concept of yes. quantum electrodynamics. <laughs> right. And it's, it's all I know about it. But I would like to ask you more broadly about quantum physics. Right. Uh, because the people hear the phrase a lot, and I think very few people have a clear idea uh, of it, and that may be in its nature that you can't have a clear idea of it, but uh, what do you tell people about? What's your kind of, you know, thumbnail description of what quantum mechanics is? Well, it's a wonderful tool for describing the world, and, but the, the, it is a mathematical tool, and so you can't really explain it except with mathematics. Mm -hmm. It's simply a, 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 but it's wonderfully precise and wonderfully clear in the language that, that's made for it, which is mathematics. But, and as soon as you try to describe it in words, it gets very fuzzy. Right. And, and, and fuzzy in a, some people would say, a philosophically important way. I mean, the fuzziness maybe is telling us something about the nature of the ultimate material fabric of the universe or oh, something or other. Probably not. I okay. mean, it's probably only making it more obscure. But, uh, well, what, I, I mean, you yourself have written about, you hear this phrase, the weirdness of quantum physics. And you yourself, I think, have used you. You have talked about the the the, the kind of atomic subatomic level of matter in that in that way, as I recall, right? Right. What what do you, what do you mean by that? Well, it doesn't behave the w the way that our normal concepts can explain. I mean, we we think of the world as made of hard objects and soft objects and fluids. We we can more or less visualize things we're familiar with. And quantum mechanics isn't like that. It's it, it's just it's just quite alien to to our way of feeling and and, and, and touching. Mm -hmm. 
And the, there was a time when, when uh, the phrase scientific materialism was common, and maybe a lot of people would use that to describe themselves. Is it, is it because of the weirdness of quantum physics, is it no longer appropriate to talk that way? Well, I don't know. I never talked that way in the first place, but uh, I don't like isms of any kind. And, but, uh, I mean, certainly there are scientific materialists still around, I'm sure. But exactly what they, what they believe, I couldn't tell you. Well, let me, let me uh, ask you this. I think you've actually written about uh, a biologist whom you did not name in this writing, who had talked about a conflict between scientific materialism and religious transcendentalism. You recall this? Yes. And first of all, you can, if you cho if you would like, name the biologist. Yes. Well, I don't remember for sure. It might have been it might have been, been Dawkins. But Wouldn't I, surprise me. I don't know. But but, but you you anyway you were arguing uh, that that was not a valid dichotomy. Yes. And 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 as I recall, the kind of uh, the weirdness of of the material world at the at the micro level entered into your argument. Right. Well, I mean that that if you look, take matter as it really is. It's not like the, the way a, a, a Tinker Toy model would, would portray it. It's a, it, it just doesn't fit the, the, the model of a machine at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and then at the other end, on the other half of the dichotomy, the religious transcendentalism, uh, I mean, you think there is room for that perspective? Or, or that, again, is a term that you can't yourself quite get, get a handle on. Uh, well, I don't know what it means, but, right. but I mean, I'm, uh, I, 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 I like to, to, I claim to be a religious person, but without any isms. I mean, uh, to me, uh, religion is a way of life and not a matter of belief anyway, and so it's, it doesn't fit any of those labels. Yeah, in fact, you've, I think you've described yourself as a Christian without the theology or something yes, like right. that. What is what is left of Christianity when you take the theology away? Well, almost the whole thing. I mean, it's it's a it's a, it's a community of people in the church, as I experience it, and who are taking care of each other, and and also uh, there's a great deal of beautiful language, there's a great deal of music. Mm -hmm. It's it's an art form, much more than a philosophy. Mm -hmm. So, so you've made no reference to explicit beliefs about divinity, about a deity, about whether there, whether Jesus was the Son of God or any of that. So you're kind of leaving all of that. You're, you're kind of agnostic on all these points, or? Oh, well, I, 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 yes, I, I mean, to a first approximation. I mean, I, 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 I think the sort of God to me does mean something, but it's, it's, but it's such a mystery that I don't feel inclined. To to, to try to invent specific models. I mean, the, the fact that we have some instinct of, of a, a mind at work in the universe seems to me uh, about as far as I'm willing to go. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that, that uh, and I call it God. God simply is a mind that's gone beyond the scale of our understanding. And that's, uh, I think, that, that's about as far as my theology goes. Okay. So, I mean, if you were living in another culture, you could equally well be a Buddhist. or Yes. You could. Because fundamentally what religion is about to you is the things that people do. Right. Okay. Um, I think, I mean, the Judaism, as I understand it, is, comes closer than uh, sort of to my way of being religious. It's much more about observance and less about beliefs. And... Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and... Uh, th there are people who, who would say, then what is the difference between that and mere ethics? Uh, what, what is the difference between that and a group that gets together and says, let's be nice, a good government league or something? Um, what, what do you, is there a difference or, or? Well, there is a lot of difference, of course. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, one of the great things about religions is that, the, that, that they last from century to century, that there's a, there's a very long tradition at least in, in, in most religions, it goes back a couple of thousand years. Mm -hmm. and that is very important, and it'll so you take a much longer view of things. And of course, there is a great emotional aspect to it, mm -hmm. which not it's not just like going to a committee meeting. 